Welcome to Straight Talk. This is Eugene Chang. Our guest this week is Jeffrey Lam, the electrical representative of Commercial First Functional Constituency. He is also a non-official member of the Executive Council and a member of the CPPCC National Committee. Earlier this month, he returned from Beijing, where he attended the two sessions meetings of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC. Mr. Lam will give us a recap of the implications of this year's meeting for Hong Kong. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you, Eugene. Thanks for inviting me. So, Jeffrey, you are very lucky. I mean, all of us didn't get a chance to fly out of Hong Kong, but you have a chance to go to Beijing. But as I read in the news, you do have to stop by in Shenzhen first, right? Yes. What is the procedure like? Well, uh, in the mainland, uh, they carry out all the procedural stuff right. uh, very stingily, right. very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, we were quarantined for seven days in mm -hmm. a hotel room. Uh, we took tests every day, uh, actually nine times in seven days. Wow. Yes. Uh, and uh, one of our members, unfortunately, uh, he was tested positive mm -hmm. when he crossed the border. So he was unable uh, to go to Beijing with us. And together with him, uh, that has to stay behind in Shenzhen, are those that were in the same bus. But a anyway, uh, it was a good experience. Right. Uh, but not so boring. I was very busy. Right. I only watched TV for a few minutes every day. Uh, I was very concerned about the situation in Hong Kong. Right. Uh, but uh, I, I do admire uh, the people's cooperation mm -hmm. uh, in Shenzhen and in the whole of China mm -hmm. in regards to following the procedure. Right. So after seven days, mm -hmm. we flew to Beijing uh, and then we started the uh, two sessions. I'm, I'm a member of the uh, CPPCC mm -hmm. National Committee. Believe me, you know, even though we have to stay in the hotel, uh, most of the meetings we travel from the hotel to the meeting place, uh, the people's great hall, uh, et cetera. Uh, but it was a good feeling. Right, Jeffrey, I want to ask you, we've read in the news that last week, Shenzhen has to go to lockdown. Mm -hmm. They've got 17.5 million population. With your experience, do you feel that watertight sort of barrier to COVID has come into Hong Kong? What's the main difference? We have similar policy, but what actually is the difference between Hong Kong and mainland? It is actually quite different. You know, some people compare Shenzhen to Hong Kong. Uh, their civil servant, the team is only 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong has, what, 180,000? How can 50 million, 50,000 people just run uh, com a complete testing mm -hmm. so smoothly w within seven days. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot really compare directly because we, we are different government, one country, two system. Mm -hmm. uh, the people are already used to it. Mm -hmm. When they know something is happening in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. they want to protect them themselves, they want to protect the city, they want to protect the country. Uh, so, and they want the economic activities to be resumed as soon as, soon as possible. So everybody cooperate. So their determination is very right. strong. In two, three days, you know, part, partial, uh, the economic activities was partially reopened. Mm. And now seven days is open. Subway, buses, uh, everything is resumed. So uh, I, I think it's useful uh, for them to do a uh, compulsory uh, testing. Right. So, Jeffrey, before we move on to talk about the implications of these important meetings to the people of Hong Kong, I'm sure many viewers would want to know what is, what is CPPCC? That means the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, where you are a National Committee member. Very briefly, what is it? Well, uh, the two sessions is actually uh, the CPPCC meeting as well as the NPC, National uh, People's Congress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we go through m many different things, mm -hmm. uh, including the uh, Premier's report, what he has done, what he's going to do in the next year, uh, in many, many different areas. Right. Let, let me talk a little bit about um, the Premier's report. Mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned as a whole, uh, for the next year, uh, China is going to 
uh, have a GDP growth of about 5.5 percent. Right. To create employment of about 11 million people, mm -hmm. and then to have a GDP increase of about 3 percent. And uh, w w one thing that really caught my eyes is uh, uh, the last year, China had is one of the very few countries that had growth. Right. Uh, also, the money that they spend on uh, helping the SMEs, the businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a record high uh, tax reduction, record high tax rebate. So they know what they are doing, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we are not seeing so, a lot of business going down, but okay and difficult. So Jeffrey, so <coughs> TPCC is more of an advisory role. And what are, your, what are your insights at the end of I mean, the, the week-long mm -hmm. meeting? What are your insights? Uh, to well, the Hong Kong people know. It's advisory, but they take our uh, suggestions, okay, proposals very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, we discuss very openly, very frankly on different matters, mm -hmm. including Hong Kong. Right. Uh, in regards to like the uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. we were hitting high numbers every day. Mm -hmm. We were short of medical supply, we were short of doctors, mm -hmm. nurses. Uh, I almost cry when they say, we are one family. Right. Okay, whatever you need, we'll, we'll give it to you. Right. This is very, very good. And also, uh, Hong Kong is an uh, international financial center. Mm -hmm. We want you to strengthen Hong Kong uh, position as an international financial center. Right. You know, yeah. so I, I, yeah. I can see the, 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 the ideas are all around it. It's not just one thing, one thing, one thing. Right. No, Xia Bolong during the meeting has said that um, because of they will maintain one country, two system policy, a lot of people are concerned that Hong Kong is to remain as a free port. This capitalist system is going to last for 50 years. And after 2007, they still have the common law system. The fact that Mr. Xia said that does it mean that he is want to reassure the foreign and local investors? Do they have concern? Well, you know, one thing uh, also uh, I pay attention to is Hong Kong is practicing common law. Right. He said common law is going to be here with us mm -hmm. for a long time mm -hmm. because that's something people respect and people are used to, uh, and it's going to be here with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. One country, two system, as uh, the late Deng Xiaoping has said, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's going to be here for 50 years. So it doesn't have to go away after 50 years. Right. But OK, now we are reaching the uh, midway, half, yes. midway. So a lot of things, I, I think we, we all have to uh, make adjustment. Like uh, Kerry mm -hmm. uh, yesterday announced some mm -hmm. uh, uh, report on the midterm report on epidemic. Right. Okay. Uh, but I think we also need to do many things in Hong Kong. Right. Okay. We want to ensure mm -hmm. the implementation of patriots governing Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And safeguarding the central government's uh, overall jurisdiction regarding Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. This is important. Of course. Okay. Uh, and also, we have to go full, full heart. Okay. Uh, joint effort in controlling the, the epidemic situation right. in Hong Kong. Okay. You know, I don't think it's out of hand, mm -hmm. but Omicron is different from Delta. Mm -hmm. The transmission rate is so exactly. fast, so strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. even in the mainland, mm -hmm. it's not, they are not yeah, seeing have, yeah, outbreak, a, yeah. a few more yeah. cases, right. but they, they are working very hard. Right. But they are also supporting Hong Kong with their best, right. you know, and also, after riding out of this storm, how are we going to, how are we going to restart Recover. our engines? Yes. Yes. How are we going to go forward? That's something we're going to talk about the second part. Right, right. Jeffrey, I want to ask you specifically, you know, Premier Li Xiaokang, mm -hmm. he emphasized three key expectations from mm -hmm. the central government for the Hong Kong mm -hmm. government to do. One is to unite and lead residents to continue to develop the economy. Two, improve people's livelihood, and also to strengthen the city as an international hub in finance, trade and shipping. So what would you advise the government when, when you come back? What would you do to them? What, what would you say to Mrs. Lam and 
with her fellow colleagues. I am actually glad uh, Carrie Lam, our CE, announced uh, some of the uh, changes. Right. Hong Kong is an international financial center. Right. And how can we keep Hong Kong as an fi international financial center? Because people are worried. They are worried that people are going away, businesses mm -hmm, are going mm -hmm, away. Mm -hmm. uh, if Hong Kong cannot maintain as an international financial center, what are we? What are we good for? So uh, now with the changes, uh, people can come into Hong Kong, the restriction on airlines is lifted. Mm -hmm. uh, and f I have a few friends mm -hmm. whom uh, left Hong Kong during Christmas right. to, to visit their Relatives, kids or yeah. families. Yeah. They are still not back here. Right. Okay. And they are running okay. different companies. All right. uh, how can we maintain the... So in a way, it's good that the government now has lifted all the restrictions right. and people can come yeah. back only with mainly seven days quarantine if they are proved to be negative. They can always go back right, home right. and do home quarantine. So this is something I always uh, advise the government. Okay. You know, how we can keep Hong Kong right, as we'll a financial, international financial well, Jeffrey, Let's take a break and don't go away. Thank you for staying with us. We have been talking to Mr. Jeffrey Lam. He has been updating us on the issues discussed at the recent two sessions, our nation's most important annual political event. So, Jeffrey, thank you for the update. But one thing I'm sure the viewers, once they know you're coming, they send me questions. They said Hong Kong is basically suffering. A lot of people are having a hard time in businesses. Um, so as an executive councillor, what do you think is the most important thing that the government can do for the people? And you know, one of your, your, your friends, your, uh, the chief executive officer at the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce was here last month. He was saying that the, um, the government should offer more assistance to the businesses. So, um, and, uh, and last week, there was the, the announcement of the employment support scheme, which I know is, is one of your initiatives. What difference is it going to make? Is it going to really help Hong Kong? And one very important thing is, will the government change if things change again? Because this government is known to be making quite drastic decisions at times, turning, turning around. So is this going to continue? And what difference is it going to make? You know, first of all, uh, if the government changes due to the situation, epidemic situation and economic situation changes, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I know sometimes people complain about uh, mixing messages. Mi mixing me messages. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before Chinese New Year, when the fifth wave already started, I, I was seeing it not so simple. Right. Okay. So uh, how to keep Hong Kong force to be strong when this is over, when we restart the engine? Right. So one thing I suggested, I said, well, if they stop their business, they have to keep the talent, they have to keep the workers. We have to help them with the ESS. We, we had it two times before. So I suggested, but we should modify it uh, because the first time some of the money-making business also getting uh, the, the support. Like supermarkets, for right, example. Right. But, but this time the modification I think is okay. Mm -hmm. But I think there are still uh, some industries that are in difficult situations. So this situation. is going to make Hong Kong much in a much stronger position to restart the engine? Of course, of course, because keeping the talent is important. I always say when businesses, when people still have a little bit of air, breathing air, right. you give them oxygen, you yes, save them. Exactly. Okay, when they died, the oxygen, the oxygen is is no useless use, and, and more. So, right. so I, I think that will be useful. Right. We will keep them survive for the next three months. Right. So, and I hope everything will be over by uh, July. Okay. So by then, everybody is still intact. So we can go back to business. Right. Okay, Jeffrey. Um, as you know, our program have a lot of exposure, especially to the to the expatriate community, and uh, and you being a representative of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, being a seasoned businessman, successful, so you know how, what people are concerned. You know, with the um, international community, you know, last week, the SCMP has said that the chief executive was advised by, his, by her chief advisor that Hong Kong is at the tipping point. And 
and being the international hub of finance is going to be at risk. So that's the reason why we had all those things happened. And do you know that uh, we have talked about a lot about this on the show, that um, the decrease in numbers in the expected community can be felt. Last month, there are a net outflow of Hong Kong was 70,000 people. And the first half of this month is already like 50,000 people. And Bernard Chan, your colleague at the Exo Convener, has said that we must have a, a roadmap, and he has done that. So do you think this plan will change if the situation gets any worse? You know, from end of last year to now, uh, people that, has, that have been working here cannot return here. Not that they are unwilling to return here, but the company have to continue. So they, some move their operations to Singapore. Uh, Singapore, for yes. argument. We said the last week. And, and then uh, the person in charge also moved there. Mm. Short term is okay, but if they, they stay there for three months, four months, five months, they are not going to come back. Okay, so we are at a tipping point. So do, do we want them to come back or do we want them to uh, stay forever in Singapore? Mm -hmm. I think the government is making uh, a, a good decision right. by opening the, the airline. They are, they are now able to come back. Because without those talent, Hong Kong will not be the same international financial center right. as before. And they also lift the air, I mean, the, the bans yeah. from the nine countries as well. That it, helps. It is not just businesses. Also the family. You know, some said, I've been here for two, two years. I have not seen my parents, hmm. okay? My kids cannot uh, go back to see their grandparents. And also hmm. teachers in the schools. We have many international teachers coming here to teach. Yes. They also want to go. Some has already gone. So it's businesses, education, and many more. So to maintain Hong Kong as an international financial center, we have to make adjustments. I think the adjustment that the, um, the chief executive have just mentioned is, is timely. timely. But we still have to open up some more like recreation facilities. Like I stay in the Shenzhen Hotel for seven days. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was not allowed to walk out of the door. It was okay. But imagine two years. Mm. Many people has not gone out of their apartment for like a month. Right. They are going crazy. Yes. Okay. So I, I think outdoor uh, recreation, sports Let's facilities. Let's hope something will, will be relaxed. Long contact, yes. long yeah. contact. Yeah. Right, Jeffrey, um, the chief executive has also said Hong Kong is still a very attractive place. He's, he has, she has all the confidence in Hong Kong, and he believes those who have left will come back. This is CE statement. Do you agree? And if you agree, is there anything that we have to do, any, any proactive plans to bring people back who have been away or been thinking to go away? I believe in that. I think Hong Kong is a great place. When I was in Beijing, I was allowed to stay behind. So people say, why are you in such a big rush to go back to Hong Kong? Right. I said, Hong Kong is my home. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong is a great place. Mm -hmm. He said, go. All right. Go home. So uh, you agree that we should do plans to, act, to yes. proactively get our talents back? You, you know, the sentiment is we can't go out. We can't bring people in. Right. Business is at a halt, you know, some business. So if we can put an act together that will they send a message that we will continue to be an international financial center, right. business as usual, banking as usual, uh, teacher, everything as usual. Right. People will come back. Right, Jeffrey, being a legislator yourself, also executive and national member, committee member of CPPCC, business manager, many, many hats. Do you agree with me saying that confidence in our government is at all time low for all these years? We had double blow of the, the COVID, we had the riot, and, and a lot of people, you, you, you read in the um, uh, social media, even you have expatriates writing comments. For example, one, I'm sure one of the infamous letters they said, summaries, they said, you have done more in 18 months to damage Hong Kong people, economy, reputation, than any bad actor could ever dream to do. And you are supposed to be on our side. You hear a lot of frustrations, right? Um, is it a fair comment to the current government? 
I think we should look forward. One of the message that I got from my uh, the CPPCC meeting is Hong Kong. It, it is said by the leader, mm -hmm. the leaders. Hong Kong will continue to be uh, a fabulous place. Right. Hong Kong but do you will think Hong Kong to government be, has been blamed? Be prosperous. Has been blamed unfairly. Uh, I, I think we have to uh, look at it. You know, we, we are not just looking at one plate. Okay? okay, there are many different plates, and how to balance it is is an art. But of course, balancing is an art. Yet, are we doing the right balancing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is not getting a consent in our community. Right. Okay. So Jeffrey, you know, um, um, Premier Lee said that we are going to continue our C election. There won't be any postponement. Um, what expectation from the business community for the upcoming CE? Well, s somebody that knows Hong Kong, of course, right. that knows the running of the, uh, the government, right. have an international perspective, mm -hmm. uh, communicate well. Yep. I, I think all those are very important. Right. Uh, and, and I think, not lastly, most importantly, right. knowing our country. Right. It can communicate with the central government. Right. Jeffrey, you know, last week, your former colleague, Fred Ma, said that we must use the right people to solve the problem. He quoted Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, that the art of government is to get the right people to the right place. Do you agree? What, whatever, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we always need the right people. Right. And it's not just the leader. We need the right team. Okay. The team that knows the inside and the outside. In my business, it's the same thing, okay? okay? Because we are not just dealing with one or two people, one or two matters. We are dealing with a lot of things. Right. Hong Kong is at a cross point mm -hmm. that we need to go forward. We need somebody that uh, has all this mentality right. to help us right. to go forward. Being also an easy member, last question, simple answer. You wear all your hats. Can you tell our viewers, can we expect a much brighter Hong Kong starting from, hopefully from June and July? Are you confident? I think uh, tomorrow is going to be better for Hong Kong. Great. All right. Thank you, Jeffrey, for sharing your insights from Beijing and the advice you have given to our chief executive. We hope that the latest lift in restrictions will pave the road for Hong Kong's recovery. Stay healthy and see you next week.